Hello everyone, I once again welcome you all to MSB lecture series on interpretative spectroscopy. So today again let me continue discussing uh, some of the important problems pertinent to all these spectroscopic methods, how to analyze the data and how to interpret the data and elucidate the structure of unknown sample. So now problem number 40 is here, the UV spectrum of this compound shows only end absorption, you should remember that determine the structure of the compound using the following data. So here, what are the data we have given? Mass is given, mass parent molecular ion peak is given, and also 1HNMR is given, and then IR spectrum is also given, and also 13C is also given. So with this, we should find out what molecule we are referring to. First, let us look into 102 here, molecular mass. From this one, we have to try to arrive at tentative molecular formula and then we have to look into saturation and unsaturation if there are any and we have to proceed that way. So let us begin with 102 here. So if 102, first we shall divide it by 13, so it becomes 91 plus, so 11, so that means basically C7 and H will be 7 plus 18. And then if you go back to the spectrum here, you can see we have a very strong peak at 1740. And also we have a peak around 1200, that also we should remember. This indicates we have both CO as well as C double bond O, that means carbonyl is also there and the ester group is also there. So that information comes. With this, now let us add one oxygen here. When we add oxygen 1, we have to take out one CH4 group. So here it becomes C6H14O. Since both carbonyl and ester group is there, it has to be COO. So we have to account for one more oxygen. So we will take one more 10 O2. This is going to be, let us assume this is going to be the composition molecular formula here. And now with this, Assuming this is correct, let us look into hydrogen deficiency index that we know the formula C plus 1 minus half H because other heteroatoms are not there, nitrogen as well as uh, halogens are not there. So if you take here, this is 5 plus 1, 6 minus 5, so it shows 1. So hydrogen deficiency is 1, that indicates there is only 1 double bond is there. In that case, it looks like a linear hydrocarbon. So now we have to write the structure. Before we write the structure, we should go back and analyze again. We have two quartets are there and two triplets are there. And that means if we are seeing a quartet that has to be next to a methyl group and same thing, that means we have two methyl groups are there here. In that case, and again, if we look into 13 CNMR, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 distinct carbon groups are there. That means we have to think of something like this. So this 5 are there. And then ester group is also there. So we will put here something like this. And then you put another one here and see whether this matches. If this is a correct structure, then this would show a quadrant and this would show a triplet and then this will also show a triplet and this will also show a quadrant but this is little bit more de-shielded compared to this one here. So let us see whether that one is de-shielded or not. We can see here uh, this is de-shielded and then this one is here and we two triplets are there and then of course we look into this one we also saw this peak as well as this peak, and then we saw five of them, and then one of them carbonyl is here. We can say quaternary carbon. So from this one, we can say that this is the correct structure. So this is how we can use all available information, starting from rule number 13, and then hydrogen deficiency index, 
and then looking into any heteroatoms are there and looking into functional groups such as CO, NH or OH and then we can arrive at the structure and interpret the data what we have obtained from actual spectrum. Now let us look into another example here. So here a compound composed of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen has a molecular ion at mz equals 90, this is important. In its mass spectrum, the base peak is at mz equals 45 atomic mass units. The infrared spectrum shows a strong absorption in the 2840 to 2980 and a very strong absorption from 115 to 125 and 1 HNMR shows two sharp signals at 3.40 and 3.55 in the intensity ratio of 3 to 2 and then 30 CNMR also has two signals. So we have to identify what is this one. First let us take 90 here divided by 13, we take 78 and 12 will be there, 12 means it becomes 18 here. So from this one oxygen is there, let us remove one oxygen here, it becomes 14 O because we have to remove CH4 that is equivalent to 12 plus 16 oxygen. Let us try to remove one more to see what would happen, C4 H10 O2, we got here C4 H10 O2 here and then when we look into these two chemical shifts here, we have 3.40 and 3.55, 3 is to 2 ratio. So that means basically we should rem divide this into 6 and 4. So that means probably we have two type of hydrogen atoms are there and of course here if you look into hydrogen deficiency, let us look into see whether we have any hydrogen deficiency here. So 5 minus 5 equals 0. So no unsaturation is there in this one because it is hydrogen index is 0. So now we have to look into the spectrum. So it has two carbons are there, 6 plus 4. The reason why I have taken this one is if you just look into the spectrum is not given. If you see both are much more de-shielded. If simple CH3 is there next to carbon that should come around 1 to 2. So since they are more de-shielded that means they are probably next to electronegative atom. Here electronegative atom is oxygen. So now if you take here CH2, CH2 is there and now they will show a singlet and then this, this will also show a singlet and the ratio is 3.40 and 3.55 and this should be the structure of the molecule here and then this would correspond to 90 here. So this is called dimethoxy ethane 1, 2, 2. Uh, what we should do is we should look into the mass. From mass we can calculate like this and whatever the remainder is there, add remainder to the quotient that would give you total number of hydrogen atoms present. What we get is C6H18, C672 plus 18, so that is correct 90. And then since oxygen is already informed that oxygen is there, one oxygen can be added and it becomes C5H14O. Add one more to see what would happen, C4H10. Now the 10 is there. 10 if you see, if we can make into 3 is to 2 ratio, automatically it becomes 6 and 4, 6 and more probably it can tell you 2 CH3 and 2 CH2 units are there in it. You can analyze like that. And then we look into here, we have two signals are there, one is 72, one is 59. So that means two type of carbon atoms are there and then they are all much de-shielded. As a result, we can conclude that this is the structure here. This actually the all the information that is provided is about 1 to dimethoxy ethane. Yes, it is here. So even I have given 1 HNMR spectrum, this one here, you can see two signals are there. One is at 3.4 and another one is at 3.55. 3.55 is for methylene and then 3.40 for methyl group. And then 13C also shows two signals. One is around 59 and another one is about 72. PPM. So this proves beyond any doubt that the data pertinent to 1 to dimethoxy ethane is given here. The question is about identifying 1 to dimethoxy ethane. Let us look into one more example here. A compound used as a 
moth repellent has three molecular ion peaks at m by z equals 146 that's 100 percent and then 148 65 percent 150 10 percent atomic mass units in its spectrum a pair of smaller peaks are seen at 111 and 113 the infrared spectrum shows sharp absorption just above 3000 and also at 1480 characteristic of an aromatic group you should remember and 1HNMR shows a sh sharp singlet at 7.2 ppm. So, 7.2 ppm can be assigned without any ambiguity to aromatic hydrogen atoms, sharp singlet. That means, we have only one type of hydrogen atoms are there and 13 CNMR signal shows two signals at 133 and 130 almost very close. With this information, we have to find out what it is. Okay, so, molecular formula is 146, again we can divide by this one, 1, so another 113, that means we get 11 and quotient will be 3, 11 plus 3 will be there equals C11 and H14. And since uh, we are referring this molecule to be moth repellent, that means usually moth repellents have chlorine in them, they substitute a chlorobenzene or something like that. So, then let us try to remove one Cl, one Cl, to remove one Cl, we have to look into C to H11, C to H11 means it will be 35 or one can also C3 H minus 1 or add Cl H, okay, remove 3 carbon atoms. So, first let us try to remove one fragment C to H11, so C9, H3, now it goes 11 and then we add Cl. Let us take out one more Cl because we get M plus 2, M plus 4 peak is also there and also this gives this information again. Now let us take this one C3 H minus, that means C6 and H4 Cl2. Let us assume this is the formula. Now let us try to find out hydrogen deficiency 6 plus 1 7 minus 2 minus 1 equals 4. 4 means 1 ring plus 3 double bonds. So, 3 double bonds and 1 ring fits into an aromatic group here. Very nicely. And now, we get 13C signal only 2. That means, we have to make sure that it is highly symmetric in nature. If it is highly symmetric and in what way we can get by putting chlorines on benzene ring to get two signals. That is only possible if you put both of them at relatively para position. That means, 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 4 dichlorobenzene or para dichlorobenzene. We can say 1, 4 dichloro benzene. Okay. So, after putting this one, let us now look into 7.2. Yes, now this is highly symmetric because you can do C2 rotation here along uh, CL, CL axis and that make this all four chemically and magnetically equivalent. As a result, we get only one signal that is at 7.2 and then this one is there here and this one, one and these four are identical. Two 13 C signals we get it and the compound here is 1, 4 dichlorobenzene. Okay, this is the one here. So, I have also taken 1 H and 13 C and MR to compare whatever the analysis we made along with mass also I have taken here and you can clearly see here 4 peaks are there 146, 148, 150 relative intensities also you can see here and then in this one it shows only one signal around 7 point simulated one shows around 7.4 nevertheless it comes at 7.2 actually. So, it is here and then in case of this one 13 C we have two signals here 132 and 130. So, you can see those and also this is in 1 is to 2 ratio 2 is to 4 1 is to 2 ratio. So, now we are our assignment is correct this is dichlorobenzene, paradichloro or 1,4-dichlorobenzene. So, now there is one more example here, 
determine the structure of a compound with the formula C10H12O2 in addition to the IR and 1H NMR tabulated data for the normal 13 C NMR depth 135 and depth 90 spectral data are also provided here. So, this would tell you information about CH proton, presence of how many CH are there, how many quaternary are there, how many CH2 are there and how many CH3 are there. This information comes, I would be elaborating little bit later. Now, let us look into this formula here. Uh, from this formula, let us find out hydrogen deficiency 10 plus 1 minus 6, okay. so 5. Now, 5 is the deficiency, that means basically we have a ring plus 4 double bonds. 4 double bonds are there. And then in this case also, what we have is, you can see here, as I mentioned, there is a CO group is there and also ester group is also there here. So, this indicates clearly. And then we have two doublets and we have three singlets are there here. That means they are all disconnected or in between we have oxygen atoms. And then what we have is in one C double bond O is there and one CO group is there here. So, let us look into it now. So, now how to write the structure now with this one 13 CNM are also showing. 13 C is showing, 13 C information is not there. 13 C shows this many peaks here. Whatever the information we have now, it is sufficient I believe to arrive at the structure. So, now by looking into 1 H NMR, you can see here, see two doublets and three singlets are there. So, these three singlets are disconnected and they do not have any nearby C C bond at all, C C bond having hydrogen atoms. So, that means uh, one can think of something like this. First, let me write uh, ring. So, this one should correspond to this formula here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 plus 2, 6, this is 10. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are there, 10 and 12, O2, this corresponds to this one, this no problem. And now, these are identical and both of them will show a doublet and similarly, these two will show a doublet and then this will show a singlet, this will show a singlet and this will show a singlet. Three singlets are there and two doublets are there. These two doublets are in the aromatic region. So, from this one, uh, we should be able to tell the structure what it is. The structure is this one. You can see the label is also done appropriately. So, A corresponds to this one, CH3 here and then what we have is B, B corresponds to methylene group next to carbonyl and C is there, methoxy group and then D and E are two doublets, they are coupled with the neighboring CH proton. Now, what information this gives? So, as I said, this information is quite vital. For example, this depth means distortionless enhancement by polarization transfer. The experiment is used to determine the multiplicity of carbon atoms, that is whether they are quaternary carbon, primary, secondary or tertiary, this information. And if we do this depth 135 experiment, this gives inverted CH2 and C group, CH and CH3 groups are upright. Then if we perform depth 90, that produces inverted C group and upright CH. The CH2s and CH3s are null. For some nuclei with a negative gyromagnetic ratio, the depth experiment can provide much higher signal to noise ratio than the standard 1D experiment with 1H decoupled nuclear overhazard effect. So, now for comparison I have shown what are the experiments one can do in this format. So, if you see here, when you take 13 C, you get all the, naturally you are getting all carbon identified here, all carbons will be coming and then you know the nature of these carbon atoms. For example, if you just take all intensities are same and you do not know which one is which one, in that case you perform depth 45. In all these experiments, quaternary carbon is not seen, they disappear, that indicates one information and then with D45, apart from quaternary carbon, we see all CH, CH2, CH3, 
with depth 90, we see only CH, whereas in case of depth 135, CH and CH3 are seen whether CH2 is inverted, this vital information. So that means this is used to extract three subspectra of CH, CH2 and CH3 signals from a series of experiments. These experiments can be run as either 45, depth 90 or depth 135. The number corresponds to a flipped angle of the 1H selection pulse. That is experimental manual. All these details will be there. It's very easy to perform. And depth 45 detects signals of all protonated carbons, CH, CH2 and CH3 with the same phase. The depth 90 gives only CH peaks, you can see. And then uh, depth 135 gives signals of all protonated carbons, but CH, CH3 signals are positive, uh, whereas CH2 is negative, you can see here. The signals of quaternary carbons are absent in all depth spectra. By combining these, it is possible to determine the multiplicity of each carbon signal. So by doing this one, we can also assigning the multiplicity, how many hydrogen atoms are there, and then eventually arriving at the structure would be rather easy, very easy to understand this one. One can also do, provided you have instrument in your uh, institute or college, it's a very nice learning process. So with this, let me stop here and continue in my next lecture more problems on possibly like this as well as uh, related to UV spectroscopy. Until then, have an excellent time. Thank you.